Hi, this is a presentation on work and power. After you're done with the presentation, there will be a quiz on testmods.com for you to complete for homework tonight. So at dictionary.com, you can look up the definition of work. And the definition of work on dictionary.com is the physical or mental effort or activity directed towards the production or accomplishment of something. So according to the dictionary.com definition, when you're watching this presentation or you're doing the quiz later, um, or you're doing almost anything productive that you're trying to accomplish something, um, then you are doing work. The scientific definition of work is very different. The scientific, scientific definition of work tells you um, that work is when you exert a force on an object that causes the object to move some distance in the same direction that the force is exerted. So let's look at that again. It's exerting a force on an object and the object has to move in the same direction the force is exerted in order for it to be work, according to the scientific definition. So in science, if the object does not move, then no work is done. Very, very, very important to understand. So let's consider this question. Can you exert a force without doing work? Yes, you can. Examples would be pushing a car that's stuck in the snow, but it doesn't move, or trying unsuccessfully to move a big piece of furniture. Any pushing or pulling without movement is going to be exerting a force without doing work. If these two guys try for three hours to push this huge couch, but they don't move it at all. Are they doing any work? No. How about these guys trying to push this car in all the snow? Are they doing any work? If the car doesn't move, they are not doing any work. What about in a tug of war? Who's doing work here? Everybody's pulling. Everybody's exerting a force, but only the people that are moving in the direction of the force are doing work. That is only the team that's winning is moving in the direction of their force. So the winning team is doing work, but the losing team is not. So we can calculate work in science. And if work is exerting a force and moving something a distance, then probably force and distance are going to be two of the components of the work equation. So the amount of work you do depends on the amount of force you exert and the distance the object moves. So when you have no distance moved, then you have no work done. So here's a picture from your textbook of a woman doing a couple of different things, and we're going to determine if she is doing work or not. In the first picture across the top, the woman's pushing a box the direction of the force is to the right. The direction of the motion is also to the right, the same direction as the force. So is she doing work? Yes, she is. In the second picture, she's lifting up her backpack. So she lifted her backpack up from the ground. The direction of the force was going upward, but the direction of the motion is to the right because she's walking to the right with the backpack. So is she doing work in this case? No. In the third picture, she's bending down and she's lifting up a bag of groceries. So the direction of force is upwards. The direction of motion is also upwards. So what do you think here? Yes, again. And finally, after she picks up that bag of groceries, she walks across the room with it. Is she doing work? That's just like the backpack again. She's not doing work here because her direction of force is upwards, but her direction of motion is to the right. They're not in the same direction, so it's not work in the scientific sense. So the formula for work is force times distance. 
Remember that force equals mass times acceleration. We know that from Newton's second law. And our unit for force is the Newton. So work can also be thought of as mass times acceleration times distance. So our unit for work is a Newton meter because force is in Newtons and distance is in meters. We give that a new name and it's called a joule, J-O-U-L-E, and we write it as a capital J. The definition of a joule is the amount of work you do when you exert a force of one Newton to move an object a distance of one meter. Here's another picture from a textbook. It's a picture of a girl lifting up an object. So in the first picture on the left, the weight of the object is 80 newtons. Okay, she's lifting it up one meter. So the amount of work done in that case is 80 joules. In the second picture, she's lifting the object up one meter as well. But in this case, she's got twice as much weight going on. Her object weighs 160 newtons instead of 80 the first time. So now her work is 160 joules. Twice as much work because she has twice as much weight. In the third picture, she's back to the first amount of weight, only 80 newtons of weight. But this time she's lifting it up two meters instead of one meter like she did the other times. And 80 times two is 160 joules of work done. So in order to have more work done, you can either increase the weight of the object that you're lifting or you're moving, or you can increase the distance that you're moving in. Both of those things will increase the amount of work done. So let's take a look at this graphic organizer and see if we can find the relationship between the words machines, force, work, and distance. We'll start with the first oval that says number one in it. Something is defined as a something else applied over a third word and made easier by a fourth word. So let's think about it. How about work is defined as what? What's the definition for work? It's a force applied over a distance. Because remember, work is force times distance. And made easier by what? Well, what's the last word we have left? We've used force and distance and work made easier by machines. And that's something we'll talk about a little bit in class. So work is defined as a force applied over a distance and made easier by machines. So like we said before, work is equal to force times distance. The interesting thing about work in the scientific sense though, is that the amount of work you do on an object doesn't get affected at all by the time it takes to do the work. Time has nothing to do with the definition of work. Remember, work is force times distance. Time is important when you talk about power, and that's something a little bit different in science. Power is the rate at which work is done. Power is equal to the amount of work done on an object in a unit of time. So just like we learned before, that force was the unit rate of momentum, and acceleration is the unit rate of velocity. Power is the rate of work. An object that has more power than another object will be able to do more work in the same amount of time, or it can do the same amount of work in less time. Either one of those things will make something more powerful. The equation for power is work over time. Remember, work is force times distance, okay? Time is super important when you're talking about power because it's what's gonna determine the rate of the work done. A watt is the unit that we use for power. It's also known as joules per second. One joule of work done in one second is equal to one watt of power. And a watt is so small that usually 
we make it a capital W and we it's really a kilowatt what we what we consider a watt like in a light bulb um, the English unit is known as horsepower so if you think of cars that have horsepower or, or um, leaf blowers or lawn mowers or snow blowers we use horsepower still for those engines but for things like light bulbs um, and microwaves and things like that we use the um, the metric unit which is watt so here's the last slide the two really important things that you need to remember from this presentation are that work is equal to force times distance so work is applying a force and moving an object a distance. If there's no distance moved, there's no work done. And power is equal to work over time. That's it. Don't forget to take the quiz. See you in class.